It would seem that we are not completely dissimilar after all, in our hopes or in our fears. Yes. Well then, perhaps one day. It's always interesting to see the links between two different series and how everything seems to somehow come together. Some of the conclusions parsed out between different writers and eras can be quite illuminating for the Trek universe. Today I want to ask a simple question. Did the founders create a lot of the life that we see in the Alpha and Beta Quadrants? And if they didn't, are they possibly the descendants of the people who did? Let's just get into it. The very notion that a Cardassian could have anything in common with a Klingon, it turns my stomach. Before we delve too deep into this, let me bring everyone up to speed on a question that has been asked in the Star Trek series, The Next Generation. Specifically, how is it that a lot of the species that exist in the Alpha and Beta Quadrants, not to mention the Gamma and Delta Quadrants, all have similar features and sustain life in similar ways. While it's not exactly the same, it does appear to somewhat be uniform. A lot of the races have all of the five senses that we experience. They require oxygen to varying degrees, are sensitive to heat and cold to varying degrees, and a multitude of other similarities. The probability of all these species having so many physiological similarities is literally a statistical impossibility. So the question becomes, how? One would have to surmise that all of this is done by some form of intelligent design. The question, interestingly, is actually addressed partially in the TNG episode, The Chase. Life evolved in my planet before all others in this part of the galaxy. We left our world, explored the stars, and found none like ourselves. We knew that one day we would be gone, that nothing of us would survive. So we left you. Our scientists seeded the primordial oceans of many worlds where life was in its infancy. The seed codes directed your evolution toward a physical form resembling ours. It was our hope that you would have to come together in fellowship and companionship to hear this message. And if you can see and hear me, our hope has been fulfilled. You are a monument. Not to our greatness, but to our existence. Ultimately, it is determined that a powerful race, a long, long time ago, seeded many of the planets that now have intelligent life in the Alpha and Beta Quadrants. This likely includes that of Cardassia, Romulus, Quonos, and Earth. The very DNA within all of these species was created in order to form a monument to the existence of the previous race. The revelation would be revered by some and ignored by others. Unfortunately, the groundbreaking, galaxy-changing information that has a body count attached to it would never be explored again, at least that I'm aware of. Unfortunately, it would never be a major plot point for other episodes. Not discussed, not explored. It would not bring the peoples of the Alpha and Beta Quadrant together, nor would it even be considered between the main cast in the shows. To be fair, it does explain how species are able to crossbreed, but it's a conversation for another time. Instead, let's focus on whom this mysterious species could be. And hear me out here. What if the progenitors of the Alpha and Beta Quadrants are the founders of the Dominion? The Great Link tells us that many years ago, our people roamed the stars, searching out other races so we could add to our knowledge of the galaxy. We went in peace. We know the ancestors of most species in the Alpha and Beta Quadrants in Trek had a rather massive empire. They spread across the stars and were likely extremely powerful. Additionally, we know that, for a time, the Dominion was a near-nomadic species that roamed the stars as well, looking for others. While the progenitors didn't originally find anyone as of the recording that we see, either that or they lied, it is possible that they continue to trek across the stars, seeding other planets around them. They would run into other species eventually, and these first contacts would not go well. Fighting and conflict may have been the mainstay. Because of this, the progenitors would ultimately find their way to their original homeworld. And let's not discount that it's possible that the progenitors stayed around long enough to see some of their own species, the ones they created, come to form. Perhaps they stayed on Quonos, and ultimately the Klingons would go to war with them. 
could the progenitors have been the Herc? It wouldn't be uncommon for the Klingons to change a story to make it look like they were the good guys after all. By the time the Founders had formed the Dominion, it's possible that so many years had passed that they had forgotten whom they were. This isn't uncommon in the Trek universe. You need no further than look at the Vulcans and Romulans to see what even a comparatively small exodus would do. The Romulans being an offshoot of the Vulcans that left their homeworld to ride under the raptor's wing. In fact, all of this isn't all that hard to imagine. Give or take, it appears that from Bajor to the original home planet of the Dominion is roughly 70,000 light years. It is possible, after seeding the Alpha and Beta Quadrants, the remnants of the progenitors would move further and further away from their, their children, I guess, for lack of a better word, and would go off to explore. Or perhaps like the Romulans, an offshoot went on their own way. Within the Gamma Quadrant, as stated, conflict would begin and they used their technology to create races that would protect them from harm or even destruction. After a while, it became a way of life. They would send out their young to explore the galaxy so that they could figure out what was out there, what they had created, and then they would wait. The Dominion was aware of the Federation. They even knew about the Cardassian border wars and agreements. This was before the wormhole. So how would they have gotten this information? It seems like it would have been a lot harder to come by. A lot harder to come by unless they already knew of the Federation, having been their creators and thus was able to infiltrate them a lot, lot easier. This consideration makes everything a lot more interesting because if right, it means that effectively when the Bajoran wormhole was discovered, the Alpha and Beta Quadrant powers were returning to their roots. The irony is that effectively, like the Klingons had before them, the Federation would confront their makers, their gods if you will, find them wanting, go to war, and defeat them. You know, maybe I was wrong about the Federation not being anything like the Klingon Empire. Maybe they have a lot in common. I prefer Klingon beliefs. I suppose your gods aren't as cryptic as ours. Our gods are dead. Ancient Klingon warriors slew them a millennia ago. They were more trouble than they were worth.